The study published in Science This Week is to some extent a game changer, but I would say, I would summarize it by saying it is a first step in a journey that will need to have multiple additional steps. When we think of cancer, cancer is a genetic disease. We're all born with a DNA that we contain in all our cells. The difference in cancer versus normal cells is that the DNA in the cancer changes. It mutates. The cancers will uh, amplify a number of genes, delete some genes. And uh, some of those cancer cells will spill that DNA into the bloodstream, which will float around. And if you have a method to detect that and uh, differentiate that from normal DNA, one may, in fact, detect the presence of cancer that otherwise wouldn't have been known. The importance of this report is really in the fact that it's the first time that somebody has taken this many patients and developed a test that looks not only at genes that may carry that information and may be detected in the bloodstream, and they looked at 2,000 letters within the DNA code uh, for this, but they also looked at several proteins. So a combination of these different platforms in one test uh, in this many patients looking across many different, different cancers is the first attempt at something like this. And uh, although it doesn't get us there, it is a significant step towards this goal and gives us uh, hope that this is something that's achievable in foreseeable future. So this uh, test is not ready for prime time. So I would not view this as something that's going to unseat the existing tests that are used in the clinical practice, such as colonoscopy, such as uh, mammograms uh, and other tests, uh, uh, PSA tests and things of that nature. However, it is a first step towards development of more molecular and more comprehensive tests. In fact, uh, this test was designed to identify possibly multiple different types of cancers and possibly at the early stage where we otherwise would not have detected them. But what's important to note is that the test development was done on patients from samples with known cancers. Whether the test will equally work in patients that don't have cancer, we don't know yet. Similarly, it's interesting that a handful of patients in that test, in the study, was false positive as they were really normal healthy controls. But the question one could ask is, are they a healthy control? Do they maybe have a cancer that we, do not, we are not aware of and that has not been detected? So clearly, this test will need to be validated in an independent cohort of patients, number one. Number two, it will have to be validated in uh, a regular population that normally would go for cancer screenings, which likely means earlier stage than what patients were in this study. And the most important thing is, does it impact the prognosis and lives of these patients? Is everything that we potentially could detect these days with molecular tests, is that all actionable? Do we need to treat everything that we detect. And those questions are not answered yet.